This video was sponsored by Notion, the ultimate productivity app. I'll have a link for you to try them out for free, so hang out until the end. As Microsoft killed off Windows Phone, stopped selling ebooks, cancelled Groove, their music streaming service, removed Cortana from smartphones, and shuttered just about every unpopular consumer facing product it had, it became clear that the company under the new CEO was ready to let go of most of its consumer facing businesses that it seemed to struggle with and instead would focus on things that worked. Things like Office, Developer Tools, Cloud Infrastructure, and LinkedIn. Big enterprise and productivity solutions that Microsoft was actually actually successful with. Despite gaming not really fitting into the company's otherwise very cohesive business-oriented portfolio, despite Xbox, their console struggling to sell even half as many units as rival PlayStation, and despite none of Microsoft's gaming efforts really taking off on Windows, with their Microsoft Store notably being less than warmly received by gamers, despite all of that, Microsoft has stuck with gaming. In fact, not only have they stuck with it, they actually seem more committed to it than ever. The company has acquired and created a total of 14 game studios, announced a new generation of consoles, codenamed Scarlet, launched a game streaming service called xCloud to compete against the likes of Google Stadia, made a special version of Minecraft to be used in science classes for kids as well as an augmented reality version for smartphones. It has spent hundreds of millions of dollars to bolster Mixer, its live streaming video platform for gamers, by signing exclusive partnerships with the two most popular game streamers in the world and promoted Phil Spencer, the head of Microsoft's gaming division, to the senior leadership team to report directly to CEO Satya Nadella. Microsoft is clearly investing super heavily into gaming, which at first glance seems out of place. Why would Microsoft, an enterprise services company, care so much about Gears of War or Sea of Thieves? What makes gaming uniquely interesting to Microsoft? Well, in the 59th episode of the Story Behind series, let's take a look at that. Real quick before we start, if you want to see more in-depth analysis of tech companies, especially from a business perspective, consider subscribing to Tech Altar. In the last few years, there have been three big trends that have helped gaming explode in popularity. First, multiplayer games are on the rise, and almost all breakout successes, like Fortnite and PUBG, are being built to be social from the start. Second, games aren't just played, they're also increasingly being watched. Be it through live streaming, let's play videos, or eSport tournaments, video content around gaming has exploded in popularity. And third, ultra-successful games, like Fortnite and PUBG, are starting to be built from the ground up to be device agnostic and run on PCs, consoles, phones, or wherever. What makes all three of these trends interesting to Microsoft is that they all have one outcome. They're all moving gaming to the cloud at an unprecedented rate. Gamers want to play and collaborate with others online, they want to watch video streams of others online, and in a couple of years many will want to have the games themselves run in the cloud instead of having to own a specific device to run them on as well. Better social features and more device choices are already creating a massive growth in gaming, with almost 2.5 billion gamers worldwide and no signs of a slowdown anytime soon. And with an ever-growing player base that also increasingly relies on the internet for gaming, gaming-related cloud processing and networking will increase exponentially too. For context, the current undisputed king of network use is internet video, which just on its own is already taking up 77% of the total global internet traffic. And according to another study, Netflix alone gobbles up 15% of global internet traffic. The load from video streaming is so huge, big players like Netflix create custom caching hardware, little dedicated streaming servers they distribute to internet service providers to keep all of the latest shows close to the user, so the hundreds of millions of viewers don't have to pull the full shows from Netflix's central servers all the time. And while traditional on-demand video streaming services are already creating such huge workloads for our networking infrastructure, this new era of internet-enabled gaming will create even larger workloads on both the networking and the processing side due to how it operates. 
video streams of games, a la Twitch, aren't just high bandwidth files like Netflix videos are, they're also streamed live, which means that unlike Netflix, they can't be buffered or cached properly. Because users expect to interact with a stream in real time, they have to be distributed to users pretty much straight away instead of relying on some intermediary caching device. AR games like Minecraft AR can rely on huge cloud databases to keep track of the digital objects placed by the users onto a map that can literally be the scale of the actual planet. And all of that is still relatively trivial compared to what will happen when actual game streaming like xCloud or Stadia will start kicking in. Because there, each player will have a unique machine in a server, essentially a gaming PC that is temporarily assigned to them, have to render a AAA game in real time and then deliver an ultra low latency stream of it of up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Android Authority's David ML says that Stadia, for him, uses around 7 gigabytes of traffic for a measly 720 to 1080p stream bump that up to 4K and you're likely looking at a minimum of 25 gigabytes per hour. All of that has to be rendered, encoded and streamed uniquely for each user, all with no caching, buffering or anything else that would help reduce the load. That is exponentially more processing and bandwidth per user than delivering an episode of, I don't know, Stranger Things or something. So if even just a tiny percentage of the 2.5 billion gamers worldwide will start switching to such services, that will require infrastructure that will be way larger than the thing that is currently already eating up three quarters of our internet. It really seems like gaming, which has historically been the industry to push advancements in processing power to our personal devices, like PCs and smartphones, by demanding ever higher graphical fidelity from them, will likely become the one to push the cloud industry to its limits as well. And that makes gaming incredibly interesting to Microsoft, whose most important product is Azure. It's big global cloud computing platform that they hope will power this new chapter of gaming. In fact, Microsoft has already identified gaming as one of the biggest workloads it expects on Azure. Now, of course, Microsoft isn't alone in this pursuit, and indeed, their two big rivals in the cloud space, so Amazon and Google, have shown very similar plans for taking over gaming as well. As a matter of fact, all three of these companies have announced almost identical gaming strategies, including each one of them having a video streaming platform that's dedicated to gaming to acquire a large audience, each having in-house game studios to make sure that they'll have exclusive titles, and each of them having either already announced, or in the case of Amazon, being very strongly rumored to be soon announcing a game streaming platform of their own, the crown jewel of their gaming ambitions. And therefore, what we can look forward to is these three cloud players trying to turn gaming into what will primarily be a cloud business. And it's a little hard to say which of them will win, but I think all three of them have unique strengths and weaknesses. Amazon with Twitch, of course, has by far the most popular video streaming service for gaming, and with AWS, technically has the biggest cloud infrastructure of the three. Google with YouTube has a huge addressable audience too, and with Android, Chromebook, Chromecasts, and the Chrome browser itself, they have a large number of clients that they can easily push their services to as well. And Microsoft, unlike the others, has a huge library of actual first-party games, a huge player base with existing Xbox accounts and achievements, as well as the Xbox console that it can use as a sort of hybrid step to kickstart its game streaming service. What I mean by that is that xCloud users who own an Xbox console can not only stream directly from the cloud, but can also stream their existing games from their very own Xbox for free too. That makes for an interesting hybrid solution the other two can't quite match. As for which of these services will emerge victorious, only time will tell, but you of course can place your bets in the comment section below. Now for this video, I was given a task to explain the mind warping experience that using Notion has been like for my startup, Crowd, that I've been working on for a while. So let me do just that. Notion is this productivity tool unlike any other that we've been using at Crowd for a bit over a month now. 
It's like a note-taking app, a to-do manager, a database, and a document cloud all in one that you can either use on your own or with your team. So this is our actual crowd workspace. And you can of course have basic stuff like notes in here, like this one, for example, or simple collections like this one, which is a collection of all of our branding and visual assets like our logos and fonts and whatnot. But you can also do way more advanced stuff. Notion can do proper task management, for example, where you can keep track of all of your to-dos as a team and see who's responsible for what. You can display information on a page in any way you want. So here's that same task list, but as a table, for example, you can do proper filtering and sorting on anything, like only showing bugs from that table, for example. Each cell in a table can be another page or another table, which can contain whatever the hell you want it to. You can tag any page, table, or person from anywhere in the project to anywhere in the project, and the list just goes on. Notion is incredibly flexible and can be set up either for teams, like my setup with Crowd, but also for individuals, like students or freelancers, for example. Personal plans start for free and a link to those can be found in the description as well, so give them a try and let me know what you think.